Young Preneurs Podcast, episode number 147, with your host, Victor Ahipeni. What's up, world? Another day, another podcast. And today I've got Sarah Madras on the show, and she is an absolutely awesome person who's got a really cool story to share on how she went from a 12 year counselor into a relationship expert and self love coach and or self-love maven as she likes to put it i didn't even know what maven meant before we got into this but trust me i learned that and a hell of a lot more not just about the whole self-love movement but also about how she runs her business how she's grown it and how she tries to stay authentic in a, in a world that is often uh marred with you know, people giving out false expectations with the results they haven't achieved themselves so it was an awesome honor to have her on if you loved the show make sure you jump over to itunes leave a rating and a review and make sure you subscribe so you don't miss an episode if apple's not your thing jump over to www.passiveincomeyoung.com where you can find all our past episodes plus a whole bunch of resources to help you get your business started and online for less than dollar so what uh and obviously if you're an android user then you can jump onto your favorite android podcast player and it will be there we've got also got the young entrepreneurs mastermind group on facebook which is a free group full of like-minded individuals just like yourself who are taking action and trying to get the results to live their life on their own terms and of course that's always our dream so team grab a pen and a paper and remember keep living life on your own terms you're listening to the youngpreneurs podcast the number one resource online for under 35 year olds where we chat twice a week to the most inspiring entrepreneurs in the world we have it all if you're looking for inspiration guidance or actionable tips to help you transition from that job into a business or if you're ready to take that business to a whole new level then this is the place to be get ready to live life on your own terms young preneurs welcome to another episode of the young preneurs podcast i'm super stoked to have you here and glad that you chose to spend your time with us as i know you could be anywhere doing anything and the absolute honor that you chose to spend it with me and today's guest is sarah madras who is a therapist turned relationship and self-love maven so we're going to dive into that because even even i'm uh, interested to to find out like I said to her before we started, what a, what a maven is, um, and I'm sure we're going to find out a lot of other things. So welcome to the show, Sarah. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. be here. It's uh, it, it's a really always an interesting thing to kind of help break down the barriers for anyone listening. But what did growing up look like for you? Was uh, you know, was I guess a was self love always there, and b was uh, entrepreneurship more importantly was that always something that you'd aspired to or had been influenced by it, it, it's interesting because I had both growing up and so my mom was the one who was the more self-love self-confidence you know woman power component and then my dad was the entrepreneur component he and his two brothers owned their own business together and so I grew up seeing both of those traits modeled for me and i was lucky enough to be able to blend both of them with that you know when, when you say the kind of the woman power and the self-love sort of thing i see a lot of people on my social media who are in the self-love side of things why why do you think it is that it's it's it, well, it seems from my end it's such a female heavily dominated customer base I think it's because men are more resistant to cultivating their feminine energy. We're all born with both masculine and feminine energy. And our culture, especially here in America, it beats out the feminine energy in men and it beats out the masculine energy in women. And so we're just lucky enough that the women's empowerment movement keeps chugging along. <laughs> and so. <laughs> We're trying to, uh, you know, get back our voice and own our power again. And it's all about speaking your truth. And it's interesting because on my end, because I have two sons, I shifted my focus from the 
just female, everybody speaking their truth to having empowering these men and bring bringing awakened men into society where they can also honor their male energy as well as their feminine energy. So I just think our society and our culture is getting there, but we're just not open enough. We're not aware enough. We're not responsive enough to uh, cultivating the feminine energy in men too. We're getting there. And so that's my goal is to keep pushing through. And if you were to look at, oh, sorry, if, if, if people out there listening and yeah, there's, there's guys out there listening and they're going, what the hell is this self-love thing? Like, what is self-love? Like, I know the two words kind of a, a self-explanatory, like, yeah, what is a general manager? Well, they generally manage, but um, what, right. with, with self-love, if you were to kind of uh, bucket it up and give people uh, an example and then why it's important or oh, not, not, mm-hmm. not so much yeah. why, why it's important, but uh, what's the point of it? More so. Oh my goodness. Yes. Yes. So I love answering the question. What's the point of it? Because the point of it is every freaking thing in your life because self love affects every single component of your life. And the way, the reason that I can say that with such certainty and confidence is because in the 12 years that I've been doing therapy, I see it in my office every single day, every single person. So no matter what it is that they're coming in for, whether it's anxiety, whether it's having an affair or porn addictions or or depression or whatever it is, it all leads back to that they're missing that self-love. They're missing that I am enough quality. That's their number one block to success, any type of success, whether it's in business, whether it's in their relationships and their ability to connect with their spouse, whether it's in their ability in business to get the promotion they want, the number one thing that's blocking them is that that voice in their head that's telling them that they are not enough, that they are not worthy. And so once they are able to create that foundation of self-love and just knowing that their worth is not dependent on the next promotion. It's not dependent on how hot their partner is. It's not dependent on how many zeros they have in their bank account, that there is no hierarchy of worth, that that's a cultural thing that's put on us in order to make sense of life, in order for us to feel safe and and to categorize things. But the truth is we are all worthy simply because we exist. Our worth is a birthright. And so it's just about us reclaiming that birthright and then all the other crap fades away because it doesn't have a power over you anymore. And so you're able to live that fuller life where you have those deep relationships and that fulfillment in your job and your career because you're living a life that's true to you and within your worth rather than always trying to reach for that carrot or rather than trying to always get that approval from someone else and all that external stimuli. So it's about basing your worth and who you are on your insides and just knowing it to be truth versus being dependent on people, uh, career or status to define who you are. And from a, I mean, it's an amazing, amazing answer. And I mean, I'm sure it's cleared up for a lot of people. I mean, I think at the end of the day, the, the self-love movement, there's some people who are just never going to jump on board with it. And there's others that it's, it's about becoming aware that there's a problem and aware that there's a solution um, mm-hmm. in it. Um, but in, in regards to the coaching side of things, so you obviously do you know, coaching and, and counseling and things in, in this space. Um, uh-huh. I've, got a, I've always got a bugbear with the coaching world, and I think even coaches have bugbears in the coaching world. What makes, you, uh, what makes you somebody that others can come to? What makes you, not, I won't say that use the word worthy, but what... Um, you can use it. I'm totally yeah, good with it. Yeah, yeah, but... <laughs> Well, I, I don't know if it's the right word. It, it, it's more, um, yeah, it, that you've got the runs on the board um, mm-hmm. to, to be coaching others. Yeah. So I have strong feelings about that whole coaching notion too. 
Um, and I recently heard a broadcast where the, and it's, he's very well known and, you know, millions of dollars made. And he said, anyone can be a coach, just get a website, start and having discovery calls. And I literally wanted to reach to the screen and be like, no, stop it. <laughs> so, <laughs> just because you sound good singing in the shower does not mean that you can call yourself a singer. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, you shouldn't be so, on American Idol. Right, exactly, exactly. So for me, it's my, you know, where I hold my expertise or what makes me able to, to pass this along and to guide people and things like that is one, my education. Like I went to school for this. I have a master's degree. I have 12 years of experience doing this exact work. So I didn't just go out and grab a website and say, Hey, I like working with people. I like relationships. I think I'll be a coach. That's not how it happened for me. Um, and so I think between just my background on, on that end of like the professional background of the degree and the education and the experience, then I combine that with my own personal journey through self-love. And so it's not, Hey, I'm going to preach this to you, but I haven't experienced it myself. I don't believe in, uh, talking the talk unless you're willing to walk the walk. And I'm not going to ask anybody that I work with to do something that I'm not willing to do myself or that I haven't already done myself. And so for me, going through my own personal journey of being in a relationship and having my self-worth just completely stripped away, and it happens so slowly and so subtly that a lot of times we don't even realize it's happening until it's too late. And until we look in the mirror and the reflection of who we are has become dull and faded and we can't, we don't even re recognize who we are anymore. And so it was through that process of having to, of allowing myself to have to, for these people to, cause I, it was my fault too. Like I allowed this to happen and allowing them to steal away my self-worth and the process of me reclaiming it and building it one step at a time. So the stuff that I teach is the exact stuff that I not only used to rebuild my worth, it's the stuff that I also use with clients and have watched it work. And so I know with certainty that this is the answer. I know with certainty that building resilient self-love is the key. And where, where does the mix of, uh, non uni non academia um and things that you've learned um uh, from experience plus you know other people that you've you've worked with and and learned from and the academia like what what would you say the mix is there for for your approach that you take with your clients you meaning like what techniques oh yeah uh more like yeah you you said you'd done your masters and you've you yeah the study side of things and then i'm sure um outside of that you've you know uh, added in your own experiences and stuff like that are you are you heavily guided from your university experiences or from your own personal experiences or from the learnings that you've done um outside of university or is it kind of a, a combination and a culmination of the whole lot Right. I think it's a combination of the whole lot. I think uh, definitely my my work in graduate school gave me this foundation. And then each experience along the way, not just with clients, but as a business owner, has taught me so much. And so a lot of times we learn more from the mistakes and whether the mistakes are your own that you've made or the mistakes are you watching other people's mistakes and learning from them. But I know as a business owner, I've learned a lot from that of what I, what's called experiential learning. So you're learning through experience. And that's the, that's the best way that I learn is by doing and walking through it and seeing the mistakes that other people made and saying, I don't want to make those same mistakes too. Or being able to look at the mistakes I've made and said, oh crap, I wish I would have done that differently. How can I do that differently next time? Yeah, that's cool. And I mean, I think that's, I mean, a lot of us live life like that, but then a lot don't. And we're mm -hmm. shackled by the framework that say university puts on us or that societal, yeah, you know, society puts on us with you know, how we should 
live and grow yeah. and and things like that so yeah it's a it's obviously well, it's, interesting yeah and shackled by pride too honestly that's one of the biggest barriers even it if you have the education, if you're not willing to look and say, I made that mistake and what can I do better next time? A lot of times it's pride that prevents the growth and the learning. Yeah, particularly in the, it's funny, my partner and I were talking about this yesterday. So the, the, the high fat, low carb diets, yeah, we're advocates of it. And um, yeah, and in New Zealand, a professor just got put in charge of, uh, looking into activity and nutrition in schools and education around it. And it's quite funny because yeah, there's a lot of research that supports it. Um, uh, yeah, that, that type of, of eating and, and things like that, but, and the success that it has and the effects on diabetes that it has and things like that. But because it's not mainstream, what dietitians and nutritionists mm-hmm. are prescribing, yeah, they're writing to the government going, how did this guy get the job? Yeah. He's a professor in, in public health, not in, in, you know, dietetics or nutrition Mm -hmm. or anything. And Mm -hmm. it's more, and that's what we're talking about. It's it's their ego and their pride more so than the, you know, the evidence is there if they want to look at it. Like literally the the actual, not like the evidence of so-and-so said such and such more. It's like there's actually reviews and and studies, but because they feel threatened rather than Mm -hmm. jumping, jumping on board it. Whereas these other dietitians are jumping behind them going, this is awesome. So glad this could happen. And it's, um, yeah, it's a, it's a really interesting thing where you, you know, progress gets made by those who, aren't confined by those constructs yep. and, yes. <laughs> and where's where's the rest where's the rest of them are going no 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 but this is how i've got taught there's no other way and yeah if that was the case we'd be stuck in the dark ages and mm-hmm. which was some, yep. some things we are but <laughs> yeah um, and if they had a solid sense of self-worth they wouldn't be threatened by that and so they'd be more open to it yeah and I mean, so it just it's amazing how it plays itself out everywhere. Yeah, I mean, it's to the ridiculous point of some dietitian had, um, yeah, sent an open letter to the government saying, you know, what was the hiring process and how did this guy get? The, who cares? Who cares? <laughs> Wait, like he, he he got the job, like right. He's a professor and he hangs out with other really really smart people. Like, <laughs> like it's probably good. It's probably good enough. It's not like they just grab somebody off the street who who was a bodybuilder and said yeah can you right. can you make every student who you know can, can you teach them how how to um yeah do certain gym movements it's uh right it's a, yep. yeah that self-worth and, and pride um yep. before we jump in I'd, I'd love to get some tips about self-worth and and um yeah how people can and help start a process to i guess becoming more open with that and more self-aware and uh yeah take steps into improving their own self-worth um but, right building that resilience yeah yep. but before yep. before we do that um from a business side of things what mm-hmm. how have you gone about building your business like have you got particular marketing funnels or have you started working with people and it's been kind of a, a, a generic transition from there that people have kind of found you or what what have you found that's been successful in the the marketing and the growth of your business so for the marketing component when i started out i started out in 2007 and it was really just about because word of mouth is the most powerful thing and so it was about getting out there and making those connections and networking and because my first company was a brick and mortar counseling agency it was about connecting with the local doctors in the area and creating a team like my dad was retired at the time so when you're starting out a business it's all about utilizing the free resources you have available to you Mm. (laughs) so absolutely Yes. And so, I mean, my dad was a business owner and he was in sales. And so I knew I could recruit my dad, send him out to all these doctors and pediatricians, and he would go out there and he would sell them on my counseling agency (laughs) and on, on my practice. And so that's what I did is between myself and he came up for two weeks. He, you know, hung out here and every day he went and pounded the pavement. And from there, it just became work. And if you provide good ethical and services that are sound with integrity, people are going to tell other people. 
because everyone talks and they're going to talk about the negative more than they're going to talk about the positive. So if they're out there talking positive about you, that says something huge, not only about the services you provide, but about the business in general. Mm -hmm. And so that was what was really happening is the marketing was more of, uh, of just being authentic and being of a high, high value and high integrity. And that's how I grew my business to begin with. Now, the second business that I started in 2015, which is more online based through the coaching, yep. the marketing is a completely different ball game now. And so I have, you know, opt-ins and funnels set up and uh, Facebook groups. And uh, again, it's the same thing about connection and you have to connect with people and live a life of integrity and uh, you know, following through with what you say you're going to do. And that's what builds trust because when people trust you, then they're more likely to utilize you. When people connect with you, then they want to use your services. They want you to be the one that helps them. Yeah. So it's a, um, yeah, it's an interesting thing because I mean, it's when you're in the online coaching space, it's such a crowded space online mm -hmm. as well. So not necessarily separate. Like I'm, I'm a big advocate of being a micro celebrity, like you know, being really well known by, uh, yeah, not a handful, but like a a, mm -hmm. small, a smaller bunch of people, and you can right. create, you can create a successful business. Like you don't have to. I mean, we you, you don't have to be. Tony Robbins or yep. Um, yep. Eckhart Tolle or any anything like that to yep. to have a successful and, and meaningful business and it's just uh, you know all of those people started at some point where they were micro celebrities to to mm -hmm. build from you're not going to go from zero to a hundred overnight mm -hmm. uh, yeah but yeah it, it 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 is interesting like going back to your I mean I think it's a good learning point yeah the the beating the pavements and and going at that and in, in your first business is um mark, like everybody out there needs to know that marketing and sales is number one like the majority of you out there are going to go oh my business is going to be successful because i'm a better insert x than everybody mm -hmm. else or yeah mm -hmm. my what's your point of difference my point of difference is yeah a great product and customer service well everyone freaking says that like if you're not getting people in the door to love your stuff then right. it's freaking pointless. Like you can be the greatest right. surgeon in the world or the greatest doctor in the world. Right. And if nobody knows about you, you're the world's best kept secret. Whereas the person, totally. the person who's and honest, the there's always going to be somebody better too. So like, I don't want to hang my hat on this whole hierarchy if I'm better than somebody else, because that's the antithesis of what I believe anyways, that there's some hierarchy. Yeah. Like I'm sure there's many amazing coaches out there. So if I'm marketing myself as I'm the best at X, Y, and Z, then to me, that marketing is not in line with my integrity. That is not truthful marketing because in this whole universe, I'm sure that there is other amazing coaches that are better than me. Yep. And so rather marketing yourself of who you are authentically and making that connection so that you have loyal followers, mm. so that you're building that trust, you're building that connection versus just everybody knows my name, but they don't know who I am. Yeah, and when people become um, content with the fact that when you go and get your hair cut, you don't necessarily go out and look for the world's best hairdresser mm -hmm. to, cut, to cut your hair or the world's best personal trainer to train you. You look for somebody who can fulfill your needs for what you can do at that point in time. And yeah, they know, like, and trust you. And then they're going right. to gonna work with you. But if they don't know yeah. you, which is number one, that's that marketing side of things. If yeah. they don't know you, then the like and the trust and the, you know, and the purchasing that, that problem or the solution that you, that you offer is never going to happen. So you just end up yeah. the best kept secret with, you know, amazing abilities that nobody ever gets to use because they don't know about you. So I think right, a, lot of, exactly. a lot of people worry too much about fine tuning the product. Whereas um, if you're confident that you can put out a good thing and connect with people, you can always make, product a mm -hmm. you know, better um over time so yeah it was, it was it was really interesting yeah i mean I, I have no doubt when you and your dad started pounding the pavements knocking on doors and introducing yourselves that you know people go oh 
oh, there's um, oh yeah, there's a there's a counselor down the road. Oh, we'll, right. we'll start using them, and they seem pretty nice. Yeah, we'll start using them, and then mm-hmm. relationships build. Whereas if you put a sign out your front door and hope that the doctors drive past <laughs> and, and and go, oh, there's a counselor. I don't know that person from a bar of soap. I might go out of my way to get their phone number, their website, look it up. And then and then start referring to them. Um, yeah, that's it's just not the way that the that the world works. And I think I, I just wanted to touch back on it because those out there doesn't matter if you're brick and mortar or not. Um, you're that's what you need to get under control first. I mean, I know a lot of in the coaching space, a lot of coaches who sell a new product before they've created it. They know what they're mm-hmm. going to put out, yep. but yep. they're going, you know, okay, why don't I make sure all my followers actually want this? Exactly. And, and then they pre-sell it and then, then they create it. And so they have to market it first and you know, then they get paid to create the course rather than create it and hope that you know, not the whole build it and they will come um, mm-hmm. phenomenon. Mm-hmm. But let, let's jump into something that you're obviously, I think everyone's kind of gauged. You might have a little bit of a passion in with the, with the self-love, self-love and um, you know, the self-worth side of things. For people out there, where can they start uh, I guess having having a not necessarily having a look, but what, what tips would you give people to to get started in this thing that's quite foreign to a lot of people? I would say start by knowing what your strengths and limitations are. So really assessing what are my strengths and passions, and then what are my limitations, and figuring out. Um, like in my program, the first pillar that they start with is figuring out what their core beliefs are, because that's the foundation of so much for people. And it opens up, it's like it unlocks a truth for them that they didn't even realize. So it unlocks why they behave the way they do, why they react to things, why they believe the things that they do, why they hold certain things of higher value than others. And so even just starting by knowing what your core beliefs Uh, values are it is like unlocks this whole awareness that then they get excited and they want to know more and so then that takes them into okay well now that I know more about who I am and what I'm about how do I express that and how do I use that to my advantage to uh, maximize my business to maximize my relationships and so it's just kind of like putting together pieces of a puzzle is how I think about it And so once they have a clear awareness of who they are, then they can say, well, these are things that I like and these are things that I don't. And I can either change them or I can accept them. And there's such a freedom in that rather than walking around and being in the dark. Like if you're in a tunnel and you have no lantern, well, your core values are kind of like your lantern that lead the way. And so I would say that would be the first step of where to start. And for for people, like when when you're saying things that you can change or you can accept, um, where does that? And I know this is this is probably too, in, I don't know if it's too in depth of a question, but where do people make that? How do people make that conscious decision on what they keep and and what they don't? Because, I mean, I guess to yeah we've we've got we've all got bad and good habits um mm-hmm. with those bad habits a lot of us tell ourselves i need to improve I, I need to get up earlier in the morning or i need to eat better or i need to you know do do these different things and we often beat ourselves up but then on the flip side if we accept them and just uh hold them yeah, if, if we go, oh, yeah, okay, I, I accept that this is yeah a part of me, but it might be, uh, it, it might not be in our best interest to just accept that. Like, where mm-hmm. do, where do we find that balance in there? On yeah, okay, I can accept that and live with that that aspect of myself. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, yeah. How do so, people go about that? Right. So I'll give an example from my personal life. So when I was in that relationship that chipped away at my self-worth that in that relationship, I was people pleasing. 
I was doing whatever, like I was agreeing with things that I didn't necessarily believe with because I didn't want to rock the boat. I was saying yes to things that I wanted to say no to because I didn't want to start conflict. I wanted um, his family's approval. And so I was giving away and doing things that were not in alignment with who I am in order to gain their acceptance and approval. And over time, that's where I lost myself. And so in that awareness was, this is causing me pain. I don't like the way that this is feeling not only emotionally, but physically, like it was causing me physical pain. Mm -hmm. I gained 40 pounds in that relationship because of emotional eating. Um, I lost my voice from this strong, independent, like, you know, woman empowerment that my mom taught me to be to this meek quiet, weak person. And I said, screw this. This is a quality about myself. I don't like, and I want to change. I don't want to be people pleasing anymore. I don't want to be afraid to say what I think or feel because I'm afraid of conflict or because I'm afraid people will reject me. So like a lot of change, it comes from pain points. We don't want to be miserable anymore. We don't want to deal with the anxiety anymore or the panic attacks where we're afraid to get out of bed and go to work that day because we're afraid we're going to have a panic attack at work if our boss yells at us. And so then we decide that's something I want to change. I'm tired of living this way. I'm tired of feeling this way. So I want to change that. And then that's when we get curious and, and, you know, Google and say, (laughs) how do I stop people pleasing? Or what can I do to not have panic attacks? Like that's what we do. That's where we start with our change. Yeah. <laughs> so. yeah doc, Dr. Google. Yeah. Yes. That's, um, yeah, that's an awesome. I think it's yeah, really cool getting kind of a yourself, yeah, your story. So thanks for sharing that. But it's um, also yeah, just good to hammer something home, the theoretical with the real life, because yeah, I think it gives people a bit more of a, an overall understanding on, the ramifications and yet the kind of the problems that I gave you and that I need to get up earlier versus the, okay, I've lost my sense of self in Mm -hmm. this whole thing, but here, here's the ramifications. I put on 40 pounds. I, you know, I'm not outspoken like I was and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And and those are the, those are the big things that I think people can take away and be like, ah, yeah, yeah. There's a little, yeah. there's a little something of that in me in different aspects, or you know, whatever, whatever they may, yeah. they may see or or take from it. Because I mean, I think a lot of people are subconsciously self-aware. We just like to push it back down and go. Yeah, oh, and no. honestly, it usually change doesn't occur until they're about to lose something. Yeah. So for my couples, like when couples come to me or even individuals, it's because they're saying my my spouse is a or. Uh, I'm having urges to cheat on my spouse or I'm afraid I'm going to get fired from my job. And so the behavior or whatever it is has gotten so bad that they're about to lose something. It could be a health scare, things like that. So it's usually those, those moments that trigger change. I just want to wind up with a couple of uh, quick fire questions more about you. Um, what does a normal day look like for you? Is there such a thing as a normal day? Do you have yeah some structure and routine around it? And um, you know, what works well for you? So I, the only way I survive is through structure and routine because um, I stay home with our two young children. And so I have created these businesses through the transitions of getting married and having two children to which I stay home with. So I am home with kids during the day and I have to be structured in order to run two businesses with two small children. Hmm. (laughs) So so a typical day is up with the kids, um, one off to preschool and then I'm with the other one and nap times are crucial. So we do not miss nap times around here. And during that two to three hour nap time period, that is when I'm doing the marketing. That is when I'm doing the networking. That is when I'm doing the coaching calls, things like that. And then luckily I am have an amazing supportive husband who, when he gets home from work, he jumps in and then that relieves me and he takes over with the kids and that relieves me to then work for a few more hours in the evening 
from about five to seven to do more work on the business. So it's about being organized and structured and blocking out my time and batching the things that I'm going to do. So if I'm going to be doing uh, like in my group right now, in my private Facebook group, I'm running a uh, relationship love strong series in the month of April because that's my anniversary month with my husband. So each week I'm offering a free workshop in the group. So I have to batch that out and block that time out every week and know between this time and this time, every Thursday, I'm going to be doing the Facebook live video workshop. And if I have videos to do before that, I'll book it right before or right after so that I'm batching it to where videos are all done at the same time. If I have blog posts to write, I'll batch it out to where I'm writing all the blog posts so that that way I'm in that zone of genius and in that flow versus doing a blog post here, then answering a phone call there, then answering emails here, like bouncing around isn't helpful. It messes up your flow. And so I batch those things in order to be 100% productive and in, in the flow of whatever that activity is in that creative space. And then I batch out time to answer emails at a different part. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, that's awesome. I think it's a brilliant way of getting you know maximum done in the in the time that you can rather than i know i i often struggle with it is yeah oh i need to do this 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 and this and i just you, know, you when you don't focus on one thing you get 10 percent of yep. six, six things done and you, yeah, there's, yeah. Then, then you're going oh i didn't get anything successfully exactly. completed yeah i'm floundering yeah. yeah. And, and I make it a point too. I end my evening. Like I am not on the computer or doing social media or anything by around eight 30 or nine, because I need that time to decompress and turn my brain off. So that's part of my daily rituals. And that's part of my self care in order to be able to fill my tank back up to get up the next day and do it all again. Nice. And from books or resources that you'd recommend outside of your own that others could uh, get started on. It doesn't have to be in self-love, doesn't doesn't have to be in business, just something that's had a profound influence on you. What would you recommend to, to people out there listening? So the book that has had the most profound influence on my life and which really created that aha moment that shift in my brain when I was going through my rebuilding process after the relationship ended yeah was the book Carry On Warrior by Glennon Doyle Melton. Okay, cool. I haven't heard of that. What yeah. what, what would people uh, who are going to pick up that get out of it? So one, she's absolutely hilarious. So it's a fun read. And two, she talk, she's a truth teller. And that is a quality that I admire. I don't believe in just talking about the highs and the triumphs and the accomplishments, you know, nobody cares about that crap, really. Mm. Unless, unless you tell me about the weeds and the muck and all the crap that you went through in order to get there, I don't care about your 40 grand day or your amazing marriage that is, you know, floating on rainbows. I don't care about that stuff. And so she is really good about talking about the messy, beautiful things and just being transparent and truthful of the struggles as well as how you get through the struggles and the darkness as well as the light on the other side of that and so that's something that I really admired and it makes you feel less alone I mean we're like if we're going to be real about it this is entrepreneurship is not easy relationships are not easy life is not easy and if all we talk about is the easy we're setting people up for failure we're setting people up to feel isolated and alone and we're not in this alone. We're not built to do this alone. I absolutely agree. I think that's a brilliant, brilliant place to uh, to round up is we're not in this alone. And uh, I think yeah, if you've got some value out of Sarah, then I think you should track her down to uh, to find out more. So if people are wanting to find out more about you, where can they go and what can they do? So on Facebook, they can jump into the group Worthiness Warriors. And I have two more free workshops to do. And so they could grab those two live and the two already recorded. 
and online, just go to myesteemteam.com and there they can access the free quiz about their strengths assessment and a bunch of other free goodies there. Awesome. We're going to link all of that at PassiveIncomeYoung.com where you can grab all our past episodes plus everything that Sarah and I have talked about and referenced. Sarah, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on. I just want to welcome you to the Youngpreneurs family and I look forward to uh, following your growth and uh, yeah, seeing, the, seeing the impact that you can have and, and helping others out there. So thanks for, thanks for being a part of it. Well, thanks for having me. It was a lot of fun. Thanks for listening to the Youngpreneurs Podcast. This was proudly brought to you by the Podcast Institute, the number one training resource to take your business from chasing leads to leads chasing you and from an absolute amateur to a full-blown authority. If you are looking to take your business to the next level, then a podcast is the obvious answer. You can get national and global exposure in a very fast time, and it's just exactly what I've done with this podcast. So if you want to find out more, get a checklist on how you can get started for under $60. And to find out more through a small training video that I've prepared for you all, then please check out PassiveIncomeYoung.com forward slash podcast training.